Hello crafters, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome back to my channel where I share handmade card ideas, tips, and tricks to help you be inspired. In this video, I have several cards to share featuring the Spellbinders June 2020 Club Kits. Spellbinders has five different clubs to choose from at the moment, and I'll show you inspiration using products from four of these clubs. The Card Kit of the Month, the Small Die of the Month, the Large Die of the Month, and the Hot Foil Glimmer Kit of the Month. All of these clubs are available as standalone subscriptions, but if you'd like to join all four and save on the cost of the clubs, and also save on shipping if you are located outside the US, there is a Glimmer Groupie Club that includes all four of those subscriptions. I'm going to start with a Card Kit of the Month. Now, I hardly ever share projects made with the Spellbinders card kits because I'm not a card kit person. I prefer separate dies or separate stamps like in the other Spellbinders clubs. But the kit this month has really caught my eye because of the amazing flower dies included in this kit. This is super quick unboxing footage that I filmed for Spellbinders that shows everything that's included in this kit. Spellbinders cart kits have really gone a long way and they have improved significantly over what they were when the kits first launched several years ago. The kit includes everything, and I mean everything, you need to make at least 10 handmade cards. You'll just need scissors, a die cutting machine to use the dies included in the kit, and a clear block along with an ink pad to use the stamp set that's included in the kit. Everything else, including the double-sided tape and even some foam squares, is included in the kit for you. You get an inspiration sheet with a step-by-step -step tutorial and additional video tutorial on the Spellbinders YouTube channel and blog. You get a full 6x6 patterned paper pad with foiled effects, gorgeous chipboard stickers, some trendy alpha stickers with gold foiling, a clear stamp set, a set of die cuts, and there are two of each, and there are so, so many die cuts in this set, plenty to make loads of cards. You also get 10 card bases, and get this, even 10 envelopes. The card bases are A2 size, and there are also even some sequins. There are additional cardstock sheets, letter size, and coordinating colors, including one double-sided metallic sheet, and of course, you get dies. So the dies are what caught my attention the most in this kit. The dies are very pretty, very versatile flower dies, and I could not resist using them to make several cards. Each flower is designed so that there are several layers to it, and the layers can be mixed and matched, giving you a lot more options as to how your flowers and layers can be combined and assembled. Truly a very versatile set for making flowers for your projects. I already had a card idea in mind when I started die cutting these and I've cut three of each flower. I used a light and a dark blue for the largest flower and also gold cardstock for the center. Next, I used light and hot pink for the medium sized flower and dark blue for the flower centers. And you really have many options as to how you combine these. What pieces you use to make the flower centers, what pieces you use to add additional layers. The leaf dies can also be used separately or together. Here I die cut the detail from dark blue and base from the light blue. But you can also inlay the detail layer into the base and have this look, which is very trendy right now. You can cut it either from regular or metallic color cardstock, inlay the pieces, or use as is. The next die is my favorite as it allows you to make a branch with berries or flower buds, and it is a true layering die. You just pick the colors of cardstock you want to use and layer away. I think I spent about three hours just die cutting the pieces, you know, just for fun to mix and match and see what color combinations I can come up with. And I barely scratched the surface with these dies. 
You also have some smaller shaped eyes that can be used either as flower centers for the larger flowers, or they can be assembled into smaller flowers for your cards, or even can be used as little filler pieces for the backgrounds. With all of my die cutting done, I began to create a pattern for my card. My goal was to make a die cut floral pattern for this card. And so I arranged the flowers first, starting with the three largest flowers. Next, I added my smaller flowers and then started adding the leaves and berry branches to build my background or my pattern. And I love this process, using individual pieces to make one custom pattern and I never get tired of doing this. You can have a variety of looks by arranging your flowers differently, using different colors of cardstock for the flowers and leaves, and even using different non-white cardstock colors for your background. And I'll show you an example of that as well. The colors of cardstock I use for my die cutting, by the way, all come from the kit. I'm not using other elements from the kit for this card, aside from a white card base, but the card kit is packed with all sorts of fun products to make loads of handmade cards. I foiled a panel of white cardstock using Spellbinder's Essential Glimmer Rectangle Plate, and I cut it out using a coordinating rectangle die, and now I'm using foam adhesive squares and glue to transfer my pattern onto this panel. This panel is a little bit smaller. It is about four by five and a quarter inches, so the pattern will be tighter here. I try to make sure I have many elements going outside the edge of the panel so that it looks like as it was cropped from a larger sheet. I personally love this look. Having adhered everything, I used my scissors and cut the excess pieces off. I foam mounted this panel onto A2 white card base from my kit and I added a foiled sentiment that reads happiest of birthdays made using Spellbinder's More Sentiments Glimmer Hot Foil Plate. The foiling on the sentiment works really well together with the gold mirror cardstock I used for die cutting here. I had some leftover flowers from all of that die cutting and experimenting so I used them to make another card. Here, I first foiled a frame using the Geometric Glimmer Hot Foil Plate on Craft cardstock. I recently shared another video with this glimmer plate showing some no-line watercolor, and this frame is from that video, where I foiled a bunch of these frames on various colors of cardstock, and this is how I typically like to foil. I get my Glimmer Hot Foil machine all hot and ready, and then I just foil the same design multiple times in various color foil on various colors of cardstock. This saves a ton of time and gives me beautiful panels that I can use for future cards. Now, in case you are new to hot foiling and you have no idea what I'm talking about, I have another video right here that shares tips about foiling and gives a good introduction to the hot foiling in general. Next, I foiled a gorgeous sentiment. I mean, isn't that sentiment just stunning? This reads, happy birthday and many more, and it comes from June Glimmer Hot Foil Kit of the Month. So this month, the Glimmer Club is five sentiments done in the same beautiful font. The size of the sentiments is really nice, and as you can see, it takes a good portion of the card, and it also fits inside that frame. If you have it, you can nestle the sentiments inside. The sentiments read, a little note to say thanks, congrats on your special day, friends make everything better, the best is yet to come, and this happy birthday one. I love these sentiments and I use them for most of my club cards this month and I'm sure I'll continue using them later for my projects. So while I was chatting about the Glimmer Club, I've adhered the die cut flowers to my panel using a mix of glue and foam adhesive squares and I basically added florals in the opposite corners of the frame. My sentiment was intentionally foiled a bit off to the right to allow for a bit of a heavier flower placement on the left. Now, this next card shows the use of floral dies from both Card Kit of the Month and the Small Die of the Month. 
I used various shades of blue along with lots of gold and added the flowers to a black background for a very contrasting look. The small dye of the month includes more gorgeous flowers and even a hand dye to dye cut a hand that is holding a bouquet or just a single flower. The hand dye is expertly done and it looks very delicate and very feminine on a card. You will need to look for some skin tone cardstock in your stash to die cut the hand from. Here I use the Fun Stampers Journey Peaches and Cream cardstock. You can also die cut it from white cardstock and use a coloring medium to color it to the desired skin tone. I did very simple card with a small die of the month. I once again foiled the sentiment using the Glimmer Kit of the month for June, those gorgeous sentiments. I die cut the panel using Essentials rectangle die and insert, and then I foam mounted my panel onto an A2 white card base. Next, I went with various shades of purple and yellow, and I got several pretty flowers. I've already created an arrangement. I used washi tape to temporarily hold it in place while I foam mounted it to the card. And look how pretty. So simple, yet stunning, I think. I added a few more single flowers to balance my design and also embellished the card using purple jewels from Pretty Pink Posh. Now here is another card made using those dyes and the same color combination. I just used a different flower arrangement and a different foiled sentiment in the center. Before I go, I also want to share a quick look at the large die of the month for June. And this includes two stunning geometric frames similar to that foiled frame that I showcased earlier, as well as some beautiful greenery. I made some quick abstract backgrounds using ink pads. I used the technique that I teach in the Spring Card Camp 2 class from online card classes, and then I foiled a birthday sentiment on this panel. Next, I foam mounted the panel to A2 white card base. I added a square frame. I cut it from rose gold mirror cardstock from Tonic Studios to match the foiling on the panel, and I used rose gold foil for the sentiment. I love the color of this cardstock. It's very beautiful. It's very subtle, and I think it looks fantastic on cards. The second card made using this kit, you can see it in the corner there, was created similarly. I made a dark blue abstract background, I let it dry, I then foiled the sentiment and I added two oval frames cut from gold mirror cardstock. So I used one square frame for the main card and then I overlapped two frames for the blue card to create a different look. Then you just add the beautiful die cut greenery Add some flowers if you like and embellish the cards with gems, jewels or sequins, whichever you prefer. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this type of video, showing multiple clubs from Spellbinders in one video and also mixing the products from various clubs to make my cards. Let me know if you'd like to see videos like this done again in the future and maybe if you have any suggestions as well. Thanks so much for joining me today. Love you guys, and I'll see you next week.